Hello, Power Apps Makers. This is Ahmad Saleh again today. Uh, I have this quick video, and this is going to be the second part of the video that I make about the Model Driven App custom pages. Uh, as we did in that previous video, we added a custom page, and that custom page we built like small canvas app. Uh, what we were trying to do is from the main grid in the Model Driven app, uh, one of the table pages, we select a record and then we click a custom button, a ribbon command button uh, that will run a JavaScript, open that uh, custom page, and then we pass the record uh, a good number or good value. And we do some kind of uh, transactions with SharePoint list that hold uh, the shipping information. So let me show you exactly where did we stop yesterday uh, and then uh, we'll continue to do this time what we will do is actually going to uh, add that button inside the main form uh, uh, in the motor driven app uh, not in the uh, main grid. So this is basically the main grid. This is a, a orders uh, table that we uh, have and then uh, what we did yesterday, when you select on this uh, item here, uh, you can actually see that there is a, a, a button that here actually came on and then you click on it and then you basically see the shipping custom page information about uh, this uh, order here. Uh, in this scenario that this is obviously the custom page we have, this is the customer information and this uh, we have this order number. Uh, this order uh, has uh, two items. It was a strawberry and vanilla cupcakes. And then uh, we have all the shipping information already being sent to the shipping department, but we don't have a tracking number yet. That's why, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have this button here actually in the custom page where we can actually request status, for example, and what I don't have anything that run here at, at the moment but we what we can do here basically you can actually uh, build any kind of like you know uh, um, uh, email uh, chain that to be sent or request information about this order why it was not shipped and, and so on and so forth so this is what we did yesterday uh, so let's go actually to our model driven app this is the model driven app this is our custom page that we built in that previous uh, uh, blog post and video uh, so you can find all the information I will also put the link for this previous um, post that I'm referring to in the description of this video so check it out uh, as well as the blog post URL as well if you want to actually see the screenshots the code and everything else uh, so uh, what we will do today basically what I'm trying to do is if I go ahead and select one of these records and this is obviously the uh, the form of that record so this is the form uh, one of the form it's it's the main form I have for the table orders in the dataverse and uh, I want to actually also show this button here so I created this actually today and I'm going to show you how we create this in the main uh, form again everything will be almost the same identical to the way that you do this when you add the button into the main menu into the main grid it's going to be the same thing the only difference is going to be the value that we pass when we click that button from the main form it's actually the same good of the record but it will be between a curly bracket and here actually the trick you know how to get rid of these curly brackets so you can use that good for you uh, you know all other uh, integration that you want to do on that custom page so what I did I went uh, you know to the again to the page orders uh, which is the table and then edit command bar uh, uh, the same thing here obviously you will have two options so you have the main grid option and you have the main form in this case I want to actually create that button inside the main form and you can see here actually you have this kind of uh, uh, review or view uh, preview of, of, of what the main grid is so this is the basically the the, the model driven app here uh, you can see that and uh, then uh, also if you click on an you know this here visual search you can basically you know get some other information about this visual but this is the main grid this is the main form and this is what we're looking for I will go ahead and hit edit right here close this and then as you can see I, I the same thing I did yesterday new 
command and you create the new button this new button actually has the same thing for everything except for the icon i changed the icon just to make it different so it's another web resource and i said you know you click web resource you create new web resource uh, you know if you if you don't want to use any of the images that you have here you can actually add your own file svg is actually uh, the format that you want to use for these icons give it a display name give it a name and then the type is going to be detected automatically or you can select it from uh, one of these images formats that you have here so this is basically how you add an icon uh, you know for a command button right here uh, also the action of this button is going to be uh, run javascript and then i have the same javascript it's the same uh, web resource with the same function name that we use in the previous uh, blog post uh, which is creating this uh, button onto uh, and add it to the main grid it's the same thing the only thing is going to be different is the parameter uh, for that one for the one that work with the main grid to add in the main grid that when we select an item in the grid we have to pass uh, uh, what we passed yesterday it was selected control all items uh, sorry, it's actually selected control, selected item ID. So this is this is the parameter we pass to the function uh, by hitting this uh, command bar, uh, command button, right? In the case of uh, the main form, you will have to select the primary item ID. Uh, again, it's going to be the same good, but the primary item ID usually will be sent between two curly bracket. Uh, and that's the only difference here. Another difference we have for the main form uh, command button is actually the visibility. It's going to be to always show. We're not going to show it in a, in a conditional formula. The other one was a conditional formula and the visible that we wanted to make sure that there is a, a one record is selected and one record only to show the button. But because actually the main form it's already showing that selected button and uh, that selected record and it's only one record so it's only always going to be visible that's basically everything we did right here then the other thing you will have to do obviously it's actually on the custom page uh, uh and, and and this is where you're going to have to parse and give this good uh from uh you know the main form uh, when when the button is clicked from within the main form not from the main grid right uh, and this is going to be on the visible of the my my main screen right here i did some uh, you know edits and and design change on on you know the screens uh, or the screen i have uh, so i will go here to the on visible and i'm gonna before that i would like to show you actually what i meant by the curly practice so this is basically what you get you know you only get uh, the the good ID or the record ID, uh, you know, when you use, uh, you know, the the main grid. But when we use uh, the button from within a main form, right? You get it actually with the curly brackets. And this is where we're gonna have to do some work to basically remove these curly brackets. And here you can see that uh, what I have done. And I'll explain it really quick. For you so basically here i set the variable uh to get the record id and again this record id it's the parameter will be returned to me once that function javascript web resource is run and completed i will receive this part of the xrm dot navigate to function so i will get actually the record id and uh, we go again to just remind ourselves uh, with uh, what we have here, uh, the function that we had here. So this is the function and this is the record ID I'm using actually. Uh, I'm getting out uh, in this on visible screen as you can see here, that's the one. So, uh, uh, and this basically it's, uh, th th I will pass this record, uh, the parameter I passed uh, when clicking that button and, and this is where I selected uh, the, the, the parent uh, primary or the primary uh, ID in case of the main form. And then uh, that, re that um, variable or this parameter actually will be passed along with the, uh, um, the page input uh, parameter in the navigate to method, right? And again, this is something you can all, all the time you can customize this block of code the way that you want it. Here you have basically the navigation option. Again, the target and the position. The position is the most important one. It's going to show you uh, if you want to show uh, this uh, uh, you know, custom page on the side 
of the model driven app page or in the middle of the middle and the page and also uh, we have the width it's 50 uh, uh, you know and the unit is in percent and this is basically uh, what do you want the size of this custom page to be uh, a ratio equal to the uh, main model driven app page so in this case it's going to be 50 percent that's mean I'm, I'm saying here it's going to be like you know uh, occupying 50 percent of the screen of the model driven app going back to this curly uh, good that we received in case we are from uh, inside a main form uh, here if you know we receive uh, the uh, you know the 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 go it this one can be either uh, you know uh, with curly uh, or uh, you know without right so it can be actually with or without so what i'm checking here the second thing i check if if i i'm gonna look for the curly uh, character and if i found it you know if it's not found that's mean this basically coming from a button that was clicked on the main grid uh, not from inside the main form uh, what i do i will set my record uh, item global variable basically looking up by that GUID and that's it right uh, else what I will do I will create an, another variable and this is basically I, I just call it to be clear for you I will call it var uh, form primary uh, item ID and then I will use the replace and the find function here right and again it's 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 very simple I will put actually this uh, formula uh, in in the description because this is going to be the most part the most important part about this video is parsing actually uh, this curly uh, uh, brackets out of, of the good uh, string that we have received uh, so basically what I'm doing is uh, I, I'm, I'm actually replacing uh, the first uh, open curly bracket uh, with blank and then the, the result is going to come in out as you know uh, all the good uh, but without the uh, you know the closing brackets so if we go back here right here so when i run the first replace right here you know the first replace this one here right if i run this the result of this is going to be you know the good without this first uh, open bracket right and everything else with the close bracket and then i will use another replace basically that include that string without open brackets and i will find the close bracket this time and i will replace it with a blank and that's it that's will be the go with without the brackets and then i will also set the this in this case the record item is going to be basically equal the new good value without these curly brackets and everything else is going to be the same uh, and uh, now we can actually go ahead and 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 do a full scenario so uh, i will go ahead and uh, go to this diego order again uh, they have multiple or he has multiple item flavors so he has mango banana chocolate in his order this is the order number as you can see here i have my custom command button i will click on it it will show me the information and uh, uh, obviously it's already been uh, you know uh, requested for shipping and we don't have a shipping tracking number yet but let's actually select one other that we haven't requested uh, shipping or process this order for shipping department yet so what i will do i will go here i have this order chocolate and banana and i will actually click shipping so what i did here as you can see i have the order information uh, but i want to actually process the order so i don't have anything else to do here except process the order so when i hit here and, and click process the order what is going to happen is this order information will be sent into the team uh, or the shipping team basically and this data is going to be saved on my sharepoint so i will click here and immediately all the information the need information the customer name order number and the address is all being sent to the sharepoint here so if i actually go ahead and refresh here you can see it was just actually added this one here right here and and again we can have another system maybe another motor driven app maybe another custom page uh, maybe a completely third party app that work with this sharepoint site and this list that handle the shipping for us right and basically what they have to do maybe 
a way or another manually or or automatically or whatever integration they have they will come here and have to basically just enter like a tracking number right and then a carrier right here uh just uh you know a, a, as a random so i will just put you know random tracking numbers right here and uh i will basically uh consider that all these items or all these orders has been shipped right that's it done so what we do here in our app now basically so if i go back and again remember you can do the same thing here i will select this order it's not shipped yet so what i will do i will uh, you, you can go here obviously you know and click shipping and remember uh, the other block boss you can select here click shipping from here and you will get the same information right and i have everything here so what i have here i have now uh, you know that the tracking number i have actually uh, information that this order has been shipped i can email the tracking number basically you have all the information you can tra track you know email the customer you know because you have the customer email so you can actually email the customer or uh, what what you want to do also you want to update the ship shipment status in your mother driven app right so in, in that case we have it not shipped here i want to go ahead and mark it as shipped right so from here i see that it has been shipped i will click here and that's it it's done you know if if you just click you know a refresh here and this is something we can actually do automatically as well you can you know once once that uh, um, custom page close you actually refresh your uh, uh model driven app page as well so it has been shipped shipped as well the same thing we'll do here this time you know again it's the same thing from here i go there and then i can see that i have the order is being shipped for diego i click actually update and then refresh i can see that this order supposed to be already shipped so if i go back or you can actually add the shipment status uh, column here as well in this order you know uh, it's a form so you have it as well uh, it's also shipped uh, i hope you enjoy this video this is basically wrap us wrap everything in regard to custom pages uh, when it comes uh, to using them inside the model driven apps and how we can you know push these things into a canvas app that you can do everything actually and you are able to not only submit one record you can actually submit multiple records uh, at the same time and load these goods into a, a collection for example and then get all these selected items so here in our case we only sending one again to change that scenario the whole trick is going to be on on these parameters that we add to the javascript uh, uh you know uh, uh web resources in this design uh designer for the command bars right so here you know these parameters you have all these parameters and obviously here we have selected item ids if you have multiple you will also being pushed as an array and you can just get them and have them actually added in a collection or something you can also add you know the unselected item counts you know uh, and also remember you have how many uh, item that you selected and your javascript function uh, or you know code can have as we said before you can have actually multiple queries uh, you know multiple parameters uh, in the same code right so here we said yesterday we only submit the GUID of the record selected record here you can have multiple parameters that you can actually define on that command bar designer for the custom uh, button i hope you have enjoyed this video and be uh, tuned for my next video and i will see you later bye